Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, distinguished colleagues, uh, let me start by uh, commending the OSC chairperson in office, uh, His Excellency Eddie Rama, for his leadership and dedication of the chairmanship throughout the challenging year. Uh, thank you for organizing the Ministerial Council meeting in a virtual format in current difficult circumstances. The motto of the chairman in office, uh, implementing our commitment together, is as urgent today as ever. Uh, 45 years passed since our commitment to the Helsinki Final Act and uh, 30 years since the adoption of the Charter of Paris which laid the foundation for a peaceful and uh, rules-based order in the OSC area. However, we are still in need of shared political will in order to find common ground and uh, foster dialogue. Dear colleagues, our annual gathering uh, give us unique opportunity to turn our commitments into relevant decisions. At this critical juncture, I'm glad that participating states managed to build a consensus on OSC leadership uh, nominations. I hope tomorrow's decision will ensure full and proper functioning of our institutions. However, it is regretful that we were unable to reach consensus on a number of important documents, including on political declaration Vienna document and uh, UNSCR 1324. I'm convinced that the adoption of these documents would have contributed to much needed trust, transparency, and confidence. Excellencies, we are faced by new reality when the pandemic further aggravates already dire security and humanitarian situation in the OAC area. With this in mind, I believe our organization and its institutions undergo the test for effectiveness, first and foremost, in terms of ensuring common security. In times this ruthless virus, we see the existing conflicts in the OSC area put vulnerable societies in exceptionally difficult conditions. The solution is clear. Existing challenges can only be overcome by universal adherence to common principles and acknowledgement that the responsibility is shared among 57. While we are commemorating landmark anniversaries of the Helsinki Final Act and the Charter of Paris, unfortunately, we still witness the present violations of the very principles enshrined in these documents. It is alarming to observe one of the OEC participating states, the Russian Federation, further continuing destructive and aggressive actions in Georgia and Ukraine by breaching the principles of inviolability of frontiers and territorial integrity of states and consequently attempting to forcefully redraw the borders. The blatant violation of the EU mediated 12 August 2008 ceasefire agreement Russia has been further consolidating its military uh, foothold in Georgia, Abkhazia, and Svinvali regions. It has been conducting illegal military exercises with Kafka's 2020 military drills as a vivid example on the territories of these occupied regions. As time passes, the security, humanitarian, and human rights challenges emanating from the occupation are only increasing while residents of occupied regions are virtually kept as a hostages of this illegal policies. Amid's pandemic and full disrespect of the UN Secu Secretary General's call for immediate global ceasefire, erecting uh, razor uh, fences and other physical barriers along the occupation line between the war-torn communities continued, which dramatically affected the lives of local population. Moreover, brutal killings of ethnic Georgians, illegal detentions have become a common uh, more practice in these regions. It is particularly concerning that the international security mechanisms and human rights monitors, including the only international mission on the ground, the EU monitoring mission, are prevented to enter the Georgia's Russian occupied territories and regions. Given the continuous provocations on the ground, I would like to highlight the important role of the UMM and its uh, mission and its uh, activities. 
Regretfully, we have witnessed also destructive attitude towards the negotiation format like Geneva International Discussion and IPRMs. Through politicizing the humanitarian issues and using the practice of walkouts, Russia has been hampering the substantial discussions within these formats. It is even more alarming that Russia has been taking additional illegal steps toward de facto annexation of Georgia's occupied regions. The adoption of the so-called program on common socioeconomic space between Russia and the occupied Abkhazia region of Georgia just a few days ago is yet another manifestation of Russia's attempts to fully incorporate Georgia's indivisible regions into its military, political, and economic and social systems. On top of it, Russia intensified hybrid warfare, disinformation and propaganda, as well as large-scale cyber attacks in the last years uh, against government, judiciary, media, and uh, private sectors of Georgia. Its propaganda machinery specifically targeted the Richard Luger Center of Public Health Research, uh, that uh, laboratory that has been uh, important in Georgia's fight against COVID-19. Moreover, even the UMM has become the subject of the attack of this uh, uh, disinformation campaign from Russia. Distinguished audience, against this background, Georgia has been sparing no effort to reach the progress on the way to peaceful conflict resolution by using the GID and IPRMs. On the other hand, Georgia has been steadily pursuing reconciliation and confidence building policy. The peace initiative, a step to better future, is implemented to improve socioeconomic conditions of the people in the occupied territories, increase engagement and people-to-people -people contacts across the occupation line. In this difficult time of pandemic, my government has been providing humanitarian assistance to Abkhazia region to mitigate dire conditions of local population. Unfortunately, Tsinghvali region remains fully isolated and the access and assistance is denied. Dear colleagues, you are aware that Georgia has fully implemented the EU-mediated ceasefire agreement and numerously reaffirmed its non-use of force commitment. We are still waiting for the reciprocity from Russia. The long-term solution of the conflict lays in Russia's compliance with the ceasefire agreement. To that end, let me once again call on Russia to cease human rights violations and allow human rights and international security arrangements in both Georgian regions withdraw its military forces from the occupied regions of Georgia and to comply with the fundamental norms and principles of the international law. Excellencies, despite all these difficulties, we are firm in our strive towards democratic transformation and rock solid in our commitment to its European and EU Atlantic integration. Recently, Georgia held parliamentary elections which international community assessed as competitive, where overall fundamental freedoms were respected. Let me use this occasion and express gratitude to all international observation missions, including the OIC OD and the OIC Parliamentary Assembly for monitoring these elections. My government is determined to address the outstanding issues. And with this in mind, we look forward to the final report of the OIC OD observation mission to follow up on its recommendations. Distinguished colleagues, uh, in the conclusion, let me take this opportunity to once again commend Albanian chairmanship for its able stewardship throughout difficult year and wish the best of success to upcoming Swedish chairmanship. Thank you, Madam Chair.